Hey everyone, it's Dustin with TechMD. Uh, today we are coming at you with a CyberPower PC Model C series. I don't know if that helps you at all if you do have one of these. Um, I can tell you what my system has. I think it's either 8 or 16 gigabytes of memory and also um, as a 3060. Now this 3060 runs at 95 watts which is perfect for overclocking and getting higher temps. Uh, the thing that you are doing, most people are not going to be doing, that I'm doing, is I'm mining on it. But if you are mining on it, then this video is definitely for you. If you're a year or two down the road and you feel like your, your system's overheating and you're outside of your warranty, this video is also for you. Um, so we're going to do liquid metal, which you have to be ultra careful with and you have to have a lot of materials. Highly recommend watching the video all the way through and then doing step by step once you're done. But you need a lot of materials um, and just it, it's, it's challenging, trust me, especially replacing the thermal pads. Thermal pads are gonna actually help keep your uh, VRAM cool and the whole overall system much cooler. And then we're just gonna wipe down all the dust. I recommend if you're running it 24 seven to do this at least six months. This is about six months old. I think I got it in May and we're in November now. Um, the temperatures were staying around 70 degrees and now even with 50 degree weather blowing on it It's starting to overheat and hash rates are fluctuating and all that. So we're gonna tear this down step by step Okay, and then I'm gonna also uh, Do some cooling modifications and cleaning and all that um, nothing too much rushed um, And I'll try to put some chapters in there so you guys can help figure out, you know, you know where to go if you already know how to do certain things um, this uh, liquid metal is definitely on the higher end skill level and I would recommend not being your first device to do liquid metal as a laptop but it's really not that difficult once you get mastered um, and you have the correct uh, details that's the most important thing was correct details especially for these thermal pads oh my gosh it's such a nightmare on a laptop you put it all back together and it doesn't work because you didn't do the right size on the thermal pads so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a tricky situation. Um, I will link all the materials and stuff like that in the description below so you guys can purchase that and help support this channel. Um, if you really like this, please leave a comment, like it, subscribe. I I'll be doing more uh, laptop videos. I got two other laptops and if I see some um, real, um, like if you guys really like it, then maybe I'll just do more laptop videos and um, buy more laptops because, you know, you guys are paying for it. Why not? So I have a blue mat that I use for my cell phone repair um, stuff. And I'm just going to keep the screws on there to keep it nice and organized. Um, highly recommend organizing your screws. So I'm just using a double zero screwdriver. I like to use grip tools, which is at Ninja Gadgets. But if you want, uh, there are, I'll be linking some good uh, tools in the description for Amazon if you just want to buy there. But unfortunately, these are not purchasable on Amazon as of yet, or maybe in the future. Especially if I see a lot of you guys uh, wanting to get these devices, or these parts that I'm doing. I thought uh, long and hard about what kind of content I want to do for this channel. If you're a regular subscriber and you're looking at this first video here, maybe you should uh, look at my intro to what I'm adding to the channel. But in the end, I, I want this channel to be all about tech, not just crypto or mining, um, but tech in general. So I already took this apart once. Uh, put upgrade memory so I'm missing a screw but um yeah I'd like to uh even potentially talk about crypto and 
I've lost some big money recently just because I screwed up. So, um, yeah, I'll be making some uh, conversations about that in the future here. I hope you guys like it. I'm a part of this forum or Discord that we're talking about uh, GPU mining and how to get better um, performance out of your card. And I've been learning all kinds of stuff. These 3080 Ti's, man, I'm getting way higher hash rates than most people can. Um, this guy's getting 91 on his, and I'm getting, uh, was getting like around 75 to 80. And as of recently, I'm getting now 85 average on each card. Uh, but I've hit 88. It's just I can't seem to modify them individually. So it's interesting. But th those are all with the light hash. Laptops don't have the light hash because they don't expect you to mine with them. Now, by the way, I bought a ton of laptops, especially from Best Buy. Oops, I missed a screw. And... Um, a lot of them just were uh, low powered and so they couldn't perform hash like 35 but this one does 47 with uh, uh, proper cooling and whatnot no problem so now we're gonna really make it proper so first things uh, you want to do is try to if you can disconnect the battery also another thing that's recommended is to Remove the battery because they get really hot. Um, yeah, you can certainly do that. But some computers will not hash with the battery removed properly. And um, the Dell laptop was one of those. Um, I have not done a video on that yet, but... It was a very difficult trying to figure that out. It was really annoying, in fact. But my goal is to remove this battery and, and not keep it in the laptop anymore. Only one I'm going to keep it on is the one I use personally when I'm traveling or whatever. So this should be able to just pull straight out with a little bit of a tug and then just set that off to the side. Okay, now remove the battery. We're going to go ahead and remove all the screws off the fans and this plating here and we're going to disconnect the fans. Sometimes they're hard to pull out. So you can grab some needle nose pliers and pull them out. They're really in there. <laughs> That'll give you much room to work with here. So we're gonna screw here, screw here, screw here. Um, so I, I restart a little bit because I forgot to hit record. So I just pulled these out with needle nose pliers here, the fans, and we are going to start unscrewing. I just screwed this, unscrewed this one here, another one right here. and then we're gonna go for the whole entire unit here just to let you know that a laptop um, pads are different and um, you'll uh, have different sizes so 
I've noticed. <laughs> they don't have the same size as uh, some of these graphics cards. Okay, now that you got all your screws loose, it's really important to have them all loose before I start lifting here. Pushing against the board and lifting up here. I don't know what this is, but it's kind of making me wonder what's holding this down. Anything special? Oh, yep, just had to pull that up a little bit. You don't want to bend this. Something else holding this together. Uh, there might be a screw underneath this tape. None that I can see. Oh, I guess they taped the heat sink. That's a little weird. I've never seen that. Okay, so we're gonna obviously have to take out these screws thinking about it now. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. This laptop is uh, designed a little bit different than I'm used to. But it looks like we got half a millimeter uh, pads. And more memory chips than I'm used to. All right, so let's get the thermal paste cleaned off. Use alcohol and like a little spray bottle here to mist it. You can just soak it, that's fine too. I just like it to make it last as long as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the RAM chips. Any oil or residue, sometimes you'll see that. Go ahead and take off the old pads. These are ultra thin, guys. And they don't cover the whole pad, the whole uh, ram chip. A little weird. Let's clean the CPU now. CPU looks like it's coated in some kind of black plastic. It's probably to do with spacing. So we're not going to really mess with it, but there's definitely resistors under here. Okay, last time I did liquid glass on, on one of these without, with the black, I just left it on there and didn't uh, put the clear coat on. Okay, so we need clear coat now. There we go, there it is. Clear base coat. Okay. 
nice, generous, thick. Don't want to get any on the top of the processor. If you do, you're going to clean it off right away. So pay attention. Liquid metal is very conductive, so we're going to cover these resistors. So that way, if the liquid metal leaks, which it normally does, it's not going to affect nothing. We even get these little gold contacts over here. I don't know if it's needed. They are putting liquid metal in laptops now, so it's not a bad idea. Just got a tad on the corner there. And it's on. Just let that dry for a second, and I'm just going to see how I feel about doing this over here. Yeah, can't really get any of it over there, but I just want to make sure it doesn't fall in the gap, so just being overly cautious. So we'll let that sit there and dry for a minute. And we are going to go over to this. And I save every single one of these just in case I'm not successful. So this um, heat sink is not as, as effective as I'd like it to be. It is what it is, though. They cheaped out. I don't think there's no saving these. They're just too thin. They fall apart instantly. All right. This one needs lots of cleaning. My rag is getting quite dirty. I'll have more here soon. Well, actually, I got one over there, so. Nice shiny surfaces. I don't think uh, CyberPower did this heat sink and the RAM any justice, but overall it does cool it really well, so it must be doing something right. So I'm not going to be making uh, RAM sizes that way. I'm going to be putting them on directly on the board, like I always do. I banged my knee on this blasted table I'm working on. Okay, so we're going to get the Calibre out. You grab a pad that's that one that's the most perfect.
Yeah, I got point seven five. And these pads do feel a little bit more rigid, but let's just hope um, the the one or the point five will be enough. I see a lot of point fives in laptops so far. Just for overall cooling, I like to, you know, put the pads all across. I think it's going to help better, um, dissipate the heat better, but hey, I could be wrong. So we're going to do three across and two across, which means that we need 41. Either way, I hack it. You guys can't see what I'm doing. And sorry about that. And then we're going to measure the RAM. the other direction. Fourteen millimeters. Just never enough room to do all this crap. <laughs> I literally put it on chairs and whatnot. Make this work here. And you can use your ruler here. It kind of gets stuck on these one millimeters. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we gotta do measure the two. I don't know what those are. These pads upon pads? These are not real chips, whatever they are. I thought that was a little weird to see that much. I mean by that much uh, memory wise, I just don't feel like, wait a second, this laptop only has six gigs of memory. Why is there more chips? All right, 
sucker pull part. Not done. <laughs> We're getting there. Okay. Next is putting the pads on, peeling it off carefully. This is super delicate. These thermal pads are some of the best. There are better ones, but they're like double the price. And um, I find these ones are very effective. Really, there's not much more cooling you can do for a laptop. The laptop VRAM doesn't really run too hot the GPU that runs the hottest. So you don't really need to re, uh, repad these if you don't want to, but I do because it's going to be learning experience and this is frustrating because these are so plastic thin. Good learning experience and also it does give me a few degrees cooler like about 10 is what I've noticed on previous models. This one half inch, 10, it's not bad. So, you know, if it's running at 80 or 85, somewhere around there for the VRAM, it'll go to um, about 75. It's the CPU that gets, CPU and GPU that get a huge uh, cooling discount So if you think about it, this is all on one cooler, right? So the more items that we can cool Better um, More cooler the laptop will be So but I don't cool the other chips because I feel like they're just not Running hot enough to really make sense for this expensive material this is super delicate and super annoying to work with. Like I said, I don't know what these are. They're not RAM chips, they're some kind of pads. I don't know why they did it. Maybe the um, Cyber PC uses the same cooler as on their 3080s and 3070s, and maybe, you know, since they have more memory, that's maybe why it's done like that. It's my best guess. So just center the, the pads the best you can. Make sure your unit's still cool. And then liquid metal is very difficult to work with. Um, you want to get a super thin coat, but it needs to be shiny everywhere. The plunger, I'm just barely pushing. And I have to pull out on the plunger if I put too much in. Oh. Exactly what I mean. Just one little slip up on the plunger and boom, it comes out. Okay, so I literally push out all the liquid metal over there because I bought five milligrams and I'm going to pull it all through the plunger. Sometimes the plunger runs out of air to pull it out. It's very annoying. Looks like I didn't get enough, of course. Oh, it's crazy how it spreads like that. It went whoosh. I don't know if you guys seen that on camera or not.
I feel like I got a little too much. That's okay. We got plenty of over here. Okay, the CPU is pretty thin, but that's looking extra thick. I'm going to do the same over here. Just look for the previous stamp. And you can go over, not a problem. We want to use the excess to put it on this side as well. Now, you want to make sure this is not aluminum, by the way. It has to be copper or nickel. So I'm just rotating my Q-tip here to get more. This is something that is too difficult for you to do, guys. You can always mail in your device. You know, one thing I forgot to do is clean out the uh, fans, but they seem to be just fine, so I'm just going to leave those alone. Um, so what I'm doing now is just pushing the liquid metal over a little bit so I can suck it up. There we go. Little wet. What, you don't want too many puddles. And I'm just gonna suck up the rest of this liquid metal here that I left in a big giant bead. I probably wasted at least a gram or two. So yeah, just be careful. If I, just buy one gram is probably enough for all my devices, but who knows. Okay, so our pads are sitting nice and pretty. Our liquid metal sitting nice here. We're ready to put this over. And we'll wipe that down up here, but really it's not that dirty. Okay, and just really careful to make sure you get perfect alignment here. You don't want to be accidentally setting down the wrong spot. I'm not sure how to grab that tape. Unless I have some tweezers or something. Ugh, oh, finally. That tape is kind of a pain. 
So I do remember one of these black screws here on the bottom. And three golden ones. Interesting. They all look the same size, so I think we're fine. At least they're all the same size, Dustin. Just want to slightly screw these in. Not all the way yet. My dumb butt decided to lose the screw. I don't think that one's super critical, but it could be. Uh, don't want to be losing these screws, guys. I'm sure it's under some of this stuff here, so I'll take a look at it, look for it later. Just briefly looking real quick. Okay, so we're not gonna screw down the whole thing until um, I find that screw and we're gonna do some testing. I'm going to test it for all day and make sure it runs proper and then I'll seal it up on a separate video. I'll put this battery in and then I'm going to test it without the battery later on uh, off camera and I'll let you know if this um, device runs without, without um, brain work. <laughs> if this device will run without... The battery. Oh, why could I not speak? So before we run anything, we want to check the temps. Make sure the CPU is running good. A good temperature. 40s, that's good. GPU had 38. Wow. Oh, that it's not even activated right now. You gotta activate it. It's running on the onboard 
one. Okay, so these are the temps I, or the settings I already had. We go ahead and make sure they're good to go. GPU out of memory, one, that's the other one, the onboard one, so it never goes. And I never set it up correctly where it annoys it. 49 degrees Celsius, 50, 51. We're hashing at 46.84. Pretty good temperatures. The goal obviously was to keep it below 75 to 78 Celsius. By the way, I spent like 10 hours maybe 12 hours plus just trying to figure out pads and uh, liquid metal um, on these units. This is not easy to figure out. bad I usually keep them upside down and that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now it is getting a little toasty but I usually keep them upside down uh, with the lids off except for these ones that were, they run really hot this is my computer number 12 Once we get the lid on, we'll probably get a little bit better performance, possibly. The RAM has definitely cooled down quite a bit. The GPU had liked it a little bit cooler, but I really think it's just to do with the um, The heat sink. We didn't have as good as results as I'd like to see. Um, and this doesn't have direct fan blow on it either, and it's not closed up yet. But we do need to test it for a while before closing it up. Um, My CPUs are getting a little hot. Not really thermal throttling though, that's good. So it could take some time for this uh, liquid panel to start uh, working properly. Sometimes I've noticed after a day, it, it starts going down a little bit better. But overall, I think that's the main issue right here. This is not as cool as I'd like to see it. Get that down in temperature down to 40, like some of my other laptops, and we'd be better off. I'll 
I'll show you another laptop with liquid metal. Uh, please cut this part. Make sure you cut that part. Show my email. This one is running at 74. It doesn't have liquid metal, but it does have new upgraded kernel pads. I was having trouble with liquid metal, like I said. Same with uh, this other PC I'm going to show you. No, this one has liquid metal and thermal pads, I think. This one's running at 67. And that's one of those open to air uh, ones that they can open. And these are the overclock I'm using. Right now it's about uh, air, uh, air temperature is about 65, 70 degrees right now. So it's just blowing that kind of air on it. Um, overall, I'm pretty satisfied with these temperatures because all these laptops were running in the 80s when they're closed up and um, they didn't have a fan blow on them or nothing. So with the fan, they lowered down to 78, 75. Yeah, never show this part for Ram or Nader. down by seven degrees, eight degrees or so. Um, it's hashing real well. We'll see if it stays like this um, or whatnot. I'll watch it carefully and I'll get back to you guys later. Well, as you can see, it's in that 71, 72 degrees Celsius. Running great. With the modifications. We didn't get a whole lot of difference, but in the end, it was worth it. Okay, with all my videos, I do like to complete and put things together. So after a day of testing and temperatures are running good, we are ready to throw this together. Um, I did test with the battery, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it outside and see how well uh, the battery does. Um, but we're going to put it out inside of the shed and uh, keep these laptops nice and cool with the liquid metal. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in the results in this particular laptop. Um, I've had much better results with my Dell laptop. And so I can't show that because I accidentally fried it. I'm working on the second one here shortly, but... I'm just trying to debate like exactly what I want to do. <clears throat> Let's just put all the screws back in. Nothing too fancy or special. This also has a thermal pad to help keep the SSD cool, I'm assuming. Yeah. It is positioned unusually weird. But overall, you got pads and just it keeps the airflow going better if you um, keep the lid on. But not always. So this right here, which I don't recommend with the metal tool, 
is where you can upgrade your memory, put another DDR4 slot in there, <clears throat> or take both of them out and put uh, faster memory with uh, 32 gigs of memory. Highly recommend at least 16, but 32 is perfect for most editors and whatnot. Uh, my intention is only as of right now is to use these for mining, but who knows what I'll do with these in the future. Um, I'm just trying to make this thing last as long as possible. <clears throat> and with proper maintenance and cooling, I'm pretty confident that we can make this uh, laptop last a very long time. <clears throat> Number one killer of laptops in general, or electronics, I should say, <clears throat> is on and off. Now, how do I know this? Well, lots and lots of fixing Xboxes and looking into what's going on. <clears throat> so, back in the day, we had Xbox 360 and Red Rings of Death, and then we also had the Yellow Light of Death on the PlayStation 3. I used to own a company called Knight's Gaming Repair that fixed them. <clears throat> and what we learned, um, after much education, searching, and whatnot, <clears throat> geez, sorry for the coughing, guys, I'm, I'm allergic to milk all of a sudden, and so I had a coffee and put some milk in it. Anyways, um, so what we learned is that the boards get hot, right? Obviously, we all know that. And there wasn't really adequate heat uh, cooling. But that's not the real killer of what caused <clears throat> the board to fail. It was flexing. Now, if you just left that Xbox 360 from day one, the really bad ones, right, the Gen 1s, day one on 24-7 and only turned it up to clean it out, put new fans, you know, fan mod it or whatever, you would probably be in a very good position not to need, um, not to ever have the yellow lights of death or, or red rings of death. Because when your motherboard cools off, it will actually... you know, get back to rigid. So it goes from a flexed position to unflexed. It's hard to describe. But in general, if you leave le electronics on that are not battery powered, <laughs> that's why I'm interested in possibly removing the battery here in the future, right? That are not battery powered and you just leave it running it's actually really good for the computer. Uh, another reason why I want to leave the laptops on is because I'm not interested in buying another battery backup for them. And they have already batteries, so if the batteries start going bad, no worries. I'm double checking them every six months or a year, and if they go bad, they go bad. But in general, if you really want to preserve your battery, do that. The battery is like 20 bucks. Maybe 40 at the most. So we're just going to put the rest of these screws in that keep on flying. If they don't want to stick, just use a magnetizer, guys. <clears throat> so if you leave your laptop on, in my professional opinion, of years of working with electronics, as long as you wipe out the dust and repaste it, especially if it's running 24-7, Repaste it like every year. Dude, you'll be fine. And if you do liquid metal, I don't know how often we should do that, but I will do some update videos in six months. Open up uh, some of these and, and double check the liquid metal. So look out forward. Look out towards uh, that video. We'll, we'll put all the model numbers and we'll put all the model numbers in every single um video so you guys know exactly you know what video I'm uh, which uh, uh, laptop I'm working on looks like I lost this I don't know what happened to it 
I know it was broken previous. I do remember buying, uh, well, I, I bought four of these, and one were, were bad right out, out of the gate, you know, like one month in. I had to send it in. The RMA process is a little slow. It took about three to four weeks to get a replacement laptop, but they uh, replaced the board and sent it back to me. So these guys are pretty good. Um, I recommend using this laptop a minimum of six months before doing pulling modifications, just so you know for sure nothing's you know, going wrong. But if you're in the United States, you're fine. You can touch it all you want. But if you're outside the United States, make sure you always wait until your warranty's over with before tinkering with your laptop. But if you're close and you know it's overheating, get it done anyways. So the overall goal of this liquid metal and, and new pads is so you guys can put it on your lap and feel like it's not overheating. You don't have to use an extra air fan cooler or any of that stuff. <clears throat> That's the goal. But We'll see how well this performs over the next six months. And like I said, I'll, I'll try to do an update video in about six months from now. So uh, right now we're in November, um, I think November 6th. So, um, you know, look out for a video. This might release a month later, but look out for a video in around April, May time. Okay, guys. Well, really, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me babble on. I hope you watch the whole entire video. If you like the details and the kind of professional advice that I give, uh, more of that coming. And I've been learning a lot about crypto trading and whatnot as well. So I'll be discussing that hopefully in the future as well. Hey, guys, have a good one. Like and subscribe. See ya. Thank you.